I'm John Manning with Electrify and today we are going to talk about jet engines, how they work and how they might be applied to a personal flying machine or a flying car. And this was a question from one of our viewers and we want to go ahead and answer that for you today. But first I want to talk to you a little bit about Electrofly. If you haven't followed us, if you haven't seen us on Facebook, if you haven't followed us on YouTube or Instagram or any of those social media channels, please do so. Your support makes all this possible. Okay, so we are a passionate group of guys who are developing personal flying machines. And yes, they do have a jet engine on them. So let's jump right into this. How does a jet engine work? When I was in college, we were told there was four basic principles. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Okay, so first of all, here is a jet engine and uh, the skin is taken off it, the casing is taken off it, so that you're seeing the inside of the jet engine. So the first part of that, the suck part, happens when this impeller spins and draws air in the front of it. That's the suck part and then it, it gets compressed or squeezed in this chamber here. So that compressed air is mixed with vaporized fuel and ignited and that ignite ignition pushes it out a back set of blades here and that is the blow part and that's the part that we care about because that's where the power is. If you look inside of a jet engine like we're doing now you can see all these basic components. You can see this front spool here and you can uh, well we call this like a single spool turbo jet and you can see how that comes into the burner can where the fuel and air are mixed and ignited and then you can see these blades that are in the back where the hot air is exhausted out the back. This would be a single spool turbo jet. They're good for high altitude. They make a ton of noise. You might see them on like fighter jets and things that go really fast and are really cool. Uh, but they're not quiet. Now they are simple. Uh, the next type of engine might be a turbo fan and a turbo fan is something that you would see on uh, an aircraft like an airliner. The turbo fan has a second spool going through the engine and it has another set of blades in the back but what's important about that is that it has a big blade up front and that blade then blows over the casing. So this, you could pretend this had a casing on and then there would be another casing on top of that. And in between those two casings is an air gap where air is free to blow through. And that bypass air is what, make, what differentiates a turbo jet from a turbo fan. And it has a lot of power and it can go, and it's a lot quieter. And that's why the airliners like them because they go fast and they don't make quite as much noise so they're more efficient. Now the third type would be a turbo prop. And uh, you can think of that turbo fan where we had that extra set of blades up here and you just replace that set of blades with a propeller and that's basically what a turbo prop uh, is. And you would see a turbo prop on an airplane that is designed to go from one city to the next. Short haul, not very long distance, but a lot of power. We've talked about uh, how jet engines uh, operate, the principles of operation. So there are some people out there who have taken a turbo from a car or a truck and they've built their own jet engines. And the, the turbo has two casings, one on the front and one on the back, and it, uh, it allows them to use that front part of the casing to draw air in just like this first set of propellers and then they run that out into their own burner can that looks something just like this and then it comes right back into the back side where there of the turbo where there's another uh, spinning impeller and then exhaust that out the back now certainly we would never recommend that anybody use like a homemade jet engine for an actual source of uh, an actual motor to drive something. It's going to be heavy and, and dangerous and not very reliable, but it ex it, it's a great way to learn the principles of jet engines. There are a couple of things that are kind of unique to jet engines, and one of the things is about uh, how they start. So we talked earlier about how it's basically a perpetuating explosion. If you just put air and fuel inside of this burner can and lit it and ignited it then it the explosion would go both directions you would have fire coming out the front end of the engine as well as fire coming out the back engine and you, you certainly don't want that to happen so when you're starting a jet engine 
you actually have to spin the propeller, the impeller, fast enough uh, so that the air is already flowing through the jet engine in a certain direction. And once you've gotten up to about 20% of the uh, operating range, then you can go ahead and introduce fuel and fire ignition into this burner can and then that will perpetuate the uh, fire and the combustion in one direction only. Um, and then of course all these components are going to get very very hot inside the aircraft and so you wouldn't want to go from like a high power setting and just shut it down. So generally you want to with the turbine engine you want to uh, let it cool down at like an idle thrust. The question was also how would this be used, how would this technology be used for building a flying car? Obviously, these uh, jet engines are not something that you see every day, but they're, they're quite simple to, the principles that they operate on are quite simple, and they have a very small package for the amount of power that they're able to put out. If you can take a jet engine and uh, and and direct that power that's a pretty good solution for a flying car in other words uh, to make a flying car using a, a piston engine you might need a very large heavy motor whereas with these turbine engines you can use a relatively small package to produce that amount of power and then of course if you can direct that thrust so that uh, you can control the aircraft then it's a pretty good solution for a flying car as well You guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Just want to uh, remind you that if you like this video, if you want to hear more about flying cars, flying machines, and if you're committed and passionate about flying vehicles, then please go ahead, like the video, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check us out on Facebook, leave us messages, comment in the comments below. All those things are great ways to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. And until the next video, We'll see you next time.